Hi, and welcome to The Big Opening with Christian Foremost. The Big Opening is an open journal podcast about being vulnerable with our feelings and the discovery of our true selves. For this episode of the podcast, we will be joined with JM from Zero Hour Discussions. Hello, JM. How are you? Hey, Christian. Good evening. Um, yeah, I'm doing fine, doing well. Well, in sanity's sake, yeah, I'm doing well so far. But besides the bad weather and also some opinions that I have regarding modern media, I think everything's really good. And thank you so much for um, the invite and also indulging this um, session that we are having right now. Sure. I'm very excited about our topic for today, which is um, more of about movies and series. Since what you talk about in your platform, right, is all about digital media, movie series, and all of that. But before we go into that, maybe you could tell us a bit m- about yourself more, about your YouTube channel, and what we can expect to hear from you. Yeah, my name is J.M. Cruz, and um, I am the host of Zero Hour Discussions on Facebook and also on YouTube. What I usually dive into, it's not just... Uh, movies and also series itself but also more about my opinions in gaming interviewing artists when i when i could actually the start of the the podcast before the genesis of the podcast was actually more of an artist interview spot where i get musician and also artist friends to talk about themselves and also their music and their craft and then i left the content creation um, space for about a year no 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 sorry about six months because i felt like um i'm having little to no direction on what i'm doing so in between six months i got to meet other people from the other side of the world who actually inspired me to do what i'm doing right now and zero hour discussions is more intrinsic based when i say about that uh, about that is we do very long discussions i think the longest that i have is six hours and i could still go more than that it really depends on the topic i get friends and also other content creators to talk about their specific um sorry their favorite movies or what's in right now what what are the movies and also series that they're excited about and also talk about other stuff like uh, video games retro video games and also video game franchises that we once enjoyed and um, the upcoming releases so it's just like a long form podcast um but the only difference is i do everything live and i never do recorded um ever since i came back so that's probably how i describe zero hour discussions and i do have another page but that's a bit more on the political political end so i'll just um advertise the zhd right now because that's what i'm marketing it yeah uh, so thank you for that jm and in the big opening we're kind of more off on the personal stories side of things so we want to get mm-hmm. to know since you sound like you're very passionate and knowledgeable about all of these kinds of media like what got you started in your love for movies and series like what started all of that uh it's kind of hard to trace back which show or which movie actually made me in because I think even in a um in a very young age I was already drawn in to media and also watching stuff even though I I didn't have any opinions before I just like to enjoy things so I think the very first or at least as far as I remember the very first um series that I actually enjoyed watching is an anime show and it's kind of hard to pinpoint but i think it's saber um saber riders and star sheriffs and then the mighty morphin power rangers the the english version though when it comes to movies it's also a mixed bag but i could say i would probably trace back that i watch a lot of movies during the 90s since i'm a 90s kid um kid i watched a lot of movies in the 90s uh, let's say batman 
mm, the Batman and also Batman Begin. I'm sorry, Batman Forever. All of those stuff that we we've watched as kids, um, Armageddon, Independence Day. Um, yeah, there's a lot. The Rock, even James Bond movies. There's a lot I could I could um, say right now, but I really can't remember which of those started my love for movies. The only thing I could remember is when will be the next movie that I'll be watching. That that's always on my mind, and. Yeah, I, I here I could remember my favorites, uh, which would be the the original Star Wars, uh, the original trilogy of Star Wars, and also Lord of the Rings, uh, to be exact, and um, the whole Nolan trilogy of the Dark Knight. So there's something about movies that people attribute in their lives that they learn a lot from it. They get in- inspiration. They get um, a lot of push in their day to day lives just because of the um, the lessons that they learn from it i think that's a big part on why people are watching that medium but ever since i got um i'm sorry ever since i dove into critical analysis and also uh with the inspiration of watching the critical drinker and um Mahler from efap i am more story uh, story base right now and also character development which is I'm looking for in a movie it's not just about the fun because each and every one person would probably say that yeah I enjoy this movie because of this what do you actually enjoy about it uh, it made me feel good but it doesn't mean it it's automatically a good movie mm-hmm. so I dive into more of the character development what makes a good character what makes a good story? What what drives people to write great stories? Where they fail, and um, how do we move forward in our entertainment? Because, to be honest with you, modern modern um, media right now it's a it's already a bit of a slump, and that's the reason why I'm holding the discussions that I have, and we're lasting about three to four hours, sometimes five, it, because we have a lot to say about modern entertainment that yeah. doesn't mean i don't enjoy movies right now it just means that i have opinions and sometimes unpopular most yeah so i guess i'm not sure if you i heard this somewhere where like movie critics they watch the movies twice the first time is to enjoy it and then the second time is more of to analyze it and I think from what you said earlier, when you're watching a movie, you're really like dissecting all of the elements, like the writing, the characters, and all of that. Um, so mm-hmm. I could say that um, you have um, your own perspective. Since you said earlier, right, that you have like opinions that others may not agree with, yeah, you have your certain perspective. Could you describe to us? Um, your perspective as a watcher and how you judge the movies. Like, what is a good movie for you? What is a bad movie? For instance, let's say, take an example out of the MCU. Be- just because the MCU is probably one of the biggest things right now. And uh, most of what we're seeing in media are always um superhero based which is in my end is very getting very tiresome but let's let's give an example for the mcu um two movies to be exact let's go ahead and pick up thor uh, the first thor movie and also um get another example of modern media which is probably let's say um doctor strange and the multiverse of madness so both of them are being made for people who enjoy marvel ish and me being also a fan of the comics not really a diehard um, comic reader i've uh probably basic to intermediate knowledge about these characters so i could say that yeah i'm looking forward to watching the first thor movie before because i know thor as a character and i also know doctor strange as a character and i probably know his art more than the usual or the casual watcher of marvel cinematic universe movies so here's an example when you when when thor came out no one knows about thor well in in within that space 
And they tried to write Thor, Kevin Brown, the, the, the director, or at least um, their part, tried to write about Thor in a very good way. They have the hero's journey, how Thor um, was perceived in Asgard, his entire fall, which inclo uh, include, included his pride as an Asgardian. He, wa he always wants to go so, goes to battle, goes on battle, and also um, all of those stuff, what do you expect from a warrior? And then he falls down on Earth because his father wanted him to do, uh, sorry, the, Odin wanted to teach him a lesson regarding humility and also how to be a real leader and a king. So he d dives into the entire arc, the hero's journey, as they say. That was ex executed perfectly. You have a good arc. You have a good um, pattern that they have for Thor. And they, they run through it throughout the entire movie. You see Thor being um, close with humans, which he has zero knowledge about. He doesn't know how to be human. He doesn't know how to re live a regular life, but he tried to adapt. And then the entire thing came through. One of, one of uh, I forgot the name of the enemy, or at least the armor went here on Earth. And it all nearly killed him, but it also unlocked the powers of, of Molnir back to him, granting him uh, the power of Thor and also deeming him worthy again. Now we go, let's go ahead a few years after when it comes to Multiverse of Madness. This entire thing when it comes to Doctor Strange, even if you compare it to Doctor, Doctor Strange 1, which also has a good um, Hero's Journey arc, the Multiverse of Madness is quite a mixed bag. You got a lot of characters there. You got Scarlet Witch. Um, you have Wanda and also um, Wong, you have Stephen Strange, you have um, America Chavez. So the biggest problem that I have with the MC right now is the way they're treating their characters with. And um, most of them, they are not being treated with respect, especially for the phase one, phase two, phase three characters, including Doctor Strange. And when they write the characters right now, it's like sending a message to people. Uh, oh yeah, we are going to use this character, uh, this um, placeholder, which is Doctor Strange, but we are going to push Wanda uh, probably as a, one of the bigger characters moving forward. So it basically loses the essence of why do you have the name Doctor Strange in the movie if you're going to go around with Wanda as the most powerful in the movie from start to finish and people don't get to realize that when they step back and see the quality of writing between phase one until today's phase phase four it's already downhill you could also compare that to anything you could compare that to let's say the batman um the batman uh movies you could compare that to any trilogy that you have Sabina Natin, when it comes to Lord of the Rings, uh, one of the most celebrated um, trilogies of all time. There's also some parts there that weren't that good, but they tried to make it consistently good. And they never pushed anything. Modern media right now, the biggest issue that most people have, or at least those who are already awakened with the issue, is they try to push an, push an agenda rather than let the people feel good about the movie they try to push an agenda and also teach people what they need to do. And being a person, or at least um, a guy who worked, I'm uh, sorry, um, who grew in the 80s and the 90s, we never had that. Who It was just purely entertainment. So when you see the rise of people um, criticizing, um, sorry, the rise of people having critical content regarding movies, YouTube, you'll see a lot of them. And why is it like that? Because people wanted to have their proper entertainment back. Like, we just want to enjoy. We don't want to think about um, modern day politics. We don't want to think about anything rather than to enjoy the content, rather than to enjoy the characters, rather than enjoy the story that you guys used to have that you already lost ever since 2010. But yeah, uh, that's probably half of what I do when I watch movies. So the first time I watch it, Sometimes I catch 75% of what I need to start a discussion. But there are some times that I need to watch it again, especially for the long format movies around three or four hours or 
three three hour movie that I can't um, necessarily unpack. Right. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but that's basically how I do things. You know how I enjoy stuff. Yeah, but I guess the question that I have for you now is since you watch movies you watch good movies you watch bad movies but is the mm. watching experience and the um dissecting part <laughs> the analyzing part of the whole thing is it enjoyable for you even if you watch a bad movie are you still having fun oh yeah um it doesn't mean that i hate on something it automatically means that i don't like the movie i enjoy a lot of bad movies as well I enjoy a lot of 80s bad action movies and also 90s bad action movies. And people, well, character development, but everything seems to be consistent. And when I say by consistency, it's, it's consistently fun. When you watch an action movie, sometimes you don't need to have that character development there. You don't need to have 100% um, story driven art. But you could see the action, you could enjoy the action as it is. Same with comedy and also romantic comedies. Though I would make an exception to rom-coms because at some point you would like to see some sort of a development within the character and also the relationship. But the entire process of watching even bad movies, I just laugh it off when it's hilariously bad or if it's really bad, bad. Like it's not watchable now. Siguro titigil ko muna and then watch it again probably a few hours. But... In this day and age, I, I try to veer away from super preachy stuff because I want to enjoy again. And it's hard to say, but if you get to see what I've been posting on my personal um, wall, it's all old, um, old media, old entertainment, even spanning through the 70s and the 60s. And why is it like that? Why am I enjoying stuff from the 60s rather than enjoying stuff right now? where we have good access on technology when these um, production and also development teams have great um, cgis why am i not enjoying that it's because the writing fails and also they try to be funny but it's not the type of comedy that i'm in so it has something to do with the political climate unfortunately when you try to mix something which isn't really working it's not you're not nailing it sometimes it gets offensive so that's the reason why i tune into 60s and also 70s because at least there there are a lot of comedies and they're not really insulting to people they try to be as fun and also hilarious and um, wholesome as they can as opposed to now that well i don't enjoy comedy for some reason yeah so you mentioned that you like old movies and also you grew up in the 90s and yeah. um the media movies and like the shows have really influenced you it's been a big part of your life since growing up maybe if there was one show that you had that you think the message really did something to you like you carried that message it shaped you to be who you are today like what movie was that what lesson was that i think it's hard for me to say that there's a message uh, i'm looking after it's more like the entire um experience mm. because when, when a person does say the message is like getting a lot at least in my end it it's getting into the preachy territory and yeah you could say that i enjoy some preachy stuff i think when looking at it in any broader view the most influence that i have in a show would be suits and also supernatural those were probably one of or two of the best um series that i watch people would say that oh three tickets diba? why are you enjoying bad stuff like supernatural yeah well first three seasons was good the same you could say with uh with suits first four seasons were good and the thing that I've picked up or learned from those series is just basically how to be the realest person that you You don't have to be masquerading something that you're not. You don't have to be politically correct. You don't have to agree on everything in this world. 
the the more you agree in everything, it seems like you're going to be a pushover, which I've learned from Harvey Specter in Suits and also from D- Dean Winchester in um, Supernatural. So that was just it. And being a real person, but also being empathetic on how other people feel towards uh, what you're doing. But in the end, at the end of the day, when I combine both their characteristics, it just boils down with me being the toughest man that I could. And also being that guiding light people want to be with when the, th- the tough things come. So being uh, very emotionally control, not really controlling, but em- emotionally hardened to the point that nothing really bothers me at this point. Well, a lot of things bother me at this point. I, I won't be that much of a, a fool saying that in the one aspect on, but being mature enough to know what's right from wrong, if you would say that would be a message, siguro part na ganyan, that I've learned from those series. And um, the sense of having personal responsibility and also accountability. Yeah. It's always part of the, the-, the theme of Supernatural and also series. Because as a Supernatural, you are going to be responsible for your family to be responsible for your brother or your mother mm-hmm. when it comes hey. to suits it's more sorry go yeah sorry i wanted to ask how old you are now just wanted to yeah how old are you now 36 36 all right mm-hmm. yeah because like the what you mentioned earlier about forming your own opinions and like having your own thoughts and not really being influenced by the things around you when you have like this stand like you you know you know yourself in a way that if you disagree with something you disagree with it even if other people are telling you otherwise it's something that i'm mm-hmm. learning kind of learning right now but i'm only, but I'm only like 25 right now uh, and got a long way to go yeah a long way to go but <laughs> <laughs> i guess i still have a lot of movies to watch as well but Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um I I think when it comes to people actually taking in criticism and also um different opinions, not everyone is going to be open to it, to be honest with you. I was like that for a very long time. Even now, sometimes if something offends me, parang nandun yung pakaramdam na ko. Kailangan sagutin to eh. Kailangan kong replyan to ng isang mapapahiya siya. Sometimes nandun pa rin siya. But the more you grow up and also the more you see yourself uh, for, from a standpoint na ito yung buhay ko noon. It, this was me a few years back. That will be a reflection of yourself to yourself that I shouldn't be doing this anymore. <laughs> like when people try to call me out and bad opinions when regards to movies. Sometimes I do call them out also. Instead of actually doing comment war on the comment section, why don't we just go live and discuss this? They, 90% of the time, they won't. Because they know deep inside that they, they can't back it up. So it really depends on how you take criticism. But what I could say is, not just for content creators, it's just try to maintain a good, um, a good reputation towards other people. Because this is what the critical drinker mentioned and the video is in my page he did um, teach me some stuff regarding content creation the more you talk negatively about people not exactly um their preference the more bad press you get and the less people you get to talk to so i have already avoided talking bad about people because there's no sense in doing it you could say na to be not as a christian fan of mcu how fan than an mcu and sabi ni christian sa akin ganda ng black widow Okay, why? Ganyan na reaction ko. But I'm not gonna judge you dahil magustuhan mo yung Black Widow kahit napangat siya on my end. We, can, we, we might make a two-hour debate about it, but at the end of the day, that's just media. That's our opinions, probably based on facts, but it shouldn't affect anything in the real world. <laughs> it, it, just have to, it just has to stay here on that side. And then after we do the discussion, let's go ahead and get some pizza. Go ahead and eat um, kain tayo sa ano, makdo. Ganun. Wasap ulit. Simple like that. 
we get to learn to other uh, with other people regardless of other people's opinion and sometimes who knows baka mas marami pang alam sa yung taong kausap mo likewise with me wag kausap kita mas marami ka pang alam sa akin we used to get to do this podcast that you're doing i don't do audio only so you have inter- interviewed other people as well so we get to learn uh, based on experiences and also how we handle ourselves and how we speak to other people and the word goes around that we don't need to bash people we don't need to bash them in regards to their opinions we may bash their opinions we're not going to bash them personally so yeah and good luck then on uh, in your experience moving forward hopefully you get to be the best version of yourself that you're going after yeah oh uh, thanks thanks for that jim actually i started the whole podcasting because i wanted to have those discussions as well because i started from I'm a blogger. I have a website. Mm-hmm. I've been writing for over three years now. And the whole, the reason I started the podcast because I wanted to open my mind to other people's opinions and really know what they think, what their perspective is on life, what their life is like. Because when you're writing, when you're writing a blog, when you're mm-hmm. writing about your story, it's one-sided. It's all about you. It's all about your opinions and thoughts. And I guess... At this point, I'm kind of more of the receiving end. Like, whatever you say, I'm just open to it. I'm kind of in that point where I am still trying to learn and form my own opinions on things. Because I'm still young. <laughs> I guess I'm still young. Writing is sense. hard, diba? Writing is hard. This is what people don't understand in regards to writing. That's why we have bad entertainment right now. It's because of bad writing. I could give money right now up front to you and makakapagsulat ka ng magandang storyline. Be honest with you. That's how bad I see media right now. It's like even yung mga vloggers sa katulad nyo, I could definitely challenge you na pag kumuha kayo ng story nyo, your, your personal story might be even better than what these people receiving millions of dollars are doing right now. So writing is a very hard art and I've big uh, respect for people or bloggers and also writers because kahit ako, kaya ko magsulat pero iba yung profession kasi. Iba yung ginagawa niya. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's kind of hard then kasi talaga is um, and this is just something that I'd like to share with you. It's because sure. um, when you're a writer or like I guess when you're a content creator as well, when you're somebody who's very creative, you don't just sit and write. You have to experience mm-hmm. life as well. So uh, that's kind of uh, where I'm at. I'm really trying to um, get perspective from people with different experiences like you, different um, niches, different um, perspectives, different just um, to open my mind up because as a writer, you kind of have to see from all aspects mm-hmm. and feel like um, this is a great chance for that. Uh, but let's see, I still feel like I'm a bad writer even if people that tell me I'm not. But kind of, I think we're all hard on ourselves in that on that level, right? <laughs> I think since you're more of a personal development pod, yeah, I could also speak on that one as well. Because I, uh, I'm also deep into personal development, which people, most people don't really know. But um, no one will be the worst critic of yourself rather than you. You know the thing. And you might, people might say na, you know, ganda ng ano mo, ganda na episode mo, ganda ganyan. But when, once you listen to your own voice, once you, once you listen to the ideas that you've already thrown out, they're recorded special to me, live, na walang edit. That was a bad take. Sana hindi ko sinabi yun. Pangit naman ito. Ganda, ganyan. We will always be um, the worst critics of ourselves. So it's not. Sometimes it, it will be with other people who are probably professionals in your field. But besides them, we will always be giving ourselves probably the worst ratings because we want to be in a point na kahit na sobrang galing na. Hopefully. There's always going to be room for improvement. Uh-huh. And once you're still alive, once you're still here, once you're still breathing, breathing once you're still um, getting to do what you want, you get to learn a lot more from other people, which is, I'm a testament to that. And that's why, same as you, that's why I also invite people from the other side of the world. 
to talk about their stuff because they have far different culture, they have far different ways on how they tackle things. And there are some things that we will probably learn from them, especially in the culture war. And it's going to be an endless cycle. The only time the cycle ends, cycle of learning ends, is when we choose for it to end. And we say, oh, okay, tapos na ako dito sa podcast. So on to the next thing. On to something else. Mm-hmm. And, but for me, there are sometimes times that I feel like I'm feeling. Especially right now that everything is semi-normal. Parang gusto ko nang bitawan. But dumadating yung point na when I go home, what's the next movie I want to talk about? You know, a lot of people messaging me that they want to discuss this, discuss that. Oh, it's another chance for me to talk. Um, probably network and also get to share ideas with other people. And probably spread the word on how things, how bad things are really right now. And probably get some information why they see things differently. Mm-hmm. But once you get to open that door, you can see how it's going kapangat ng ano ang Hollywood ngayon ang hirap na niya isarado and it's something na gusto kong iwasan din ng tao just enjoy what you want you know since sabi ko despite my opinions just, just enjoy what you want and yeah. get to learn from them so. so right now we are going to be doing our special segment in the middle of the podcast this oh is my called god what is this <laughs> lights on or lights off so i would like to ask you JM Lights on or lights off? Huh. I would say, since I'm a big fan of watching movies, lights off. <laughs> lights off. So for lights mm. off, we do this thing where we ask people a, a personal question about how they see themselves, for example. So lights off is mm. kind of like, um, what is JM Light? Like when the lights are off, how do you see yourself? What do you hide from other people? Something like that. Hmm. Why do I hide from other people? I think. Yeah, since I keep on mentioning Batman, then and probably besides Harvey Specter and also um Dean Winchester. I think Bruce Wayne Batman is also one of my heroes growing up. And when you see Bruce Wayne Batman, you see two different people. They get to, I'm sorry, Bruce gets to segregate or differentiate himself when when he needs to be Bruce Wayne, when he needs to be Batman. So it's more like of a, not a multiple personality disorder, but here is how, how people are in front of like this camera here's how people are in person siguro yung aspect na yun yun ang wala ako but when it comes for me to me being straight to the point you always see that each and every time and what i hide from people is also the same attitude i try to just sit down in an area even let's say i know everyone i just sit down and observe people rather than talk because you get to learn about other people when you see them talk see them converse with other people see their ideas floating around so people ask me uh siguro kapag kasama ka namin ganto ka din kadada no you're going to expect a different me you're going to see me as who i am out outside which is I'm very silent. I'm not really that outgoing, except when I want myself to be seen in public. Or you know, oh, when I want to watch a movie, me and my girlfriend go on a date, go to church. Or if my band plays in an anime convention, yun lang talaga yung panahon na nakikita ako ng tao, besides work. Even in work, work itself, people don't hear me talk inside the office and let's say if it's very important so when they see me in youtube or in facebook yeah this is my outlet 
this is how I perceive things outside of the office. This is me enjoying stuff. It doesn't need to be always, but you get, get to hear me talk probably for three hours about things that I love. Because when I'm outside, it's purely business talaga. Unless it's like leisure. Like, yun nga, tutugtug ako or kasama ako girlfriend. So, yeah. I think that will be the only thing na meron akong tinatago na hindi talaga ako maingay in person. But I, I, I try to be different, pero wala eh. Siguro, I'm introverted talaga. Mm-hmm. It, it's really hard for me to to say kung introvert or extrovert ako. Because once I get to talk to other people, they're direct na rin sila. Yeah. And hindi naman ako direct direct sa ito. Yeah, I, I, I actually really relate to what you said because I'm, I'm the same. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I have a podcast. I talk a lot in this podcast. I talk for about an hour to different people. But on a normal setting, I'm kind of like you, an introvert who just sits. Especially when we're in like a family ga- gathering with relatives. I just mm-hmm. sit there and eat. I wouldn't really talk to them mm-hmm. because I'm just not interested. <laughs> I'm not interested yeah, in like the discussions that they have. More, more on like the topics, like celebrity chicas. I'm not really like I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't like contribute much to that conversation. Um, mm-hmm. but then in something like this, or like I'm talking to somebody personally. I guess it's also mm-hmm. about the people, the kind of people that you're like talking to. Because as you said, you're having like you don't know if you're introvert or extrovert because kind of go both ways depending on the people you're with. So if you don't feel or like the setting, for example, for work, it's like all serious. So you're kind of introverted there. But then maybe when you're around with your friends or you're here in your platform or like talking about something that you're passionate about with the same people who are passionate about the same thing, you're more extroverted. So I, I get that. Um, But yeah, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> we have a couple more questions um, leading to our final question later on. But this is more of, you said earlier that you critique things, right? Um, if your life was a movie, like for example, you are the main character of the movie that you're in, how would you critique your story? That's hard. That's yeah. very hard. Because number one, I have or I'm currently writing something. So it's hard for me to step back. Well, it's easy for me to step back and say what I'm doing is a piece of S. And it's more, why are you doing this? Why are you inserting yourself inside your own story or in your story that you're writing? So based on what I'm doing right now, it's basically a life story and i involve a lot of i'm oh, sorry a lot of um personal and also uh they call this futuristic and also fanatical stuff like i include final fantasy themes i include from anime themes i include game storylines in this particular writing so it's a mi- mixed bag i want to say in atang kalat ng sulat mo bakit ganito to why, why does the main character doesn't have any de- no why does the main character have so little development and you're revolving the um the development of the supporting characters rather than the main character so probably the worst thing that i have to tell myself i could separate myself and listen to um why are you why is this going into a much more of a tragic fate for your car for the main character meanwhile deep inside we always want to have that storybook ending or the what do you call this fairy tale ending or what we write in my case it's not going to be a fairy tale ending yeah it's going to be a very bad not be really a bad ending it's going to be a bad ending for the main hero Mm-hmm. But everyone else will be benefiting from what's going to happen. Yeah. I guess what I would just like to say about that is, first of all, I'm kind of doing the same thing. But that's a secret. Um, like also writing a book about myself. 
but it's like a secret. The thing that I would like to share about like writing your own story and like how life is different from a story or something that you see in the movies is because our life is kind of a mix of events that some maybe some events are not um interesting and um they're not like in a story is there's like um a climax and there's like a flow of events it's kind of entertaining and all that while we just live our days day by day so mm-hmm. it's mess it's messed up like um sometimes as a book you would read um three years worth of experience in a book and then in like an hour but then those three years if you live those three years it will be very messy you won't know where your story is going so i'm not sure if i'm making any sense but that's yeah, yeah. um what i am kind of realizing right now is that if i would write my story it wouldn't be about my whole life it would just be about certain moments of my life that flows into a story that makes sense and then my ending would probably end on a certain age like for example my story would end right now that i'm 25 that story would end and then maybe another story would begin from when i at 25 to 30 it's much more interesting or all of that but yeah that's just my opinion but yeah i think that what you're doing is good because it's kind of like you're creating your own world i guess mm. Yeah, you're creating your own world because I think that's what we do. We express ourselves as creatives. Like we feel like this world isn't enough in a way, so we want to create our own. Not sure if that makes any sense, but yeah. I I think I've had enough of um, popular media that I don't find anything interesting at this point. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why when I said a while ago, I'm willing to bet money that you probably create a better script than most of these these writers because they've been co-opted with activists. That's why I don't like yung sabihin sa akin na, ano yung message nito? No. Entertainment was not really about the message. Entertainment is supposed to entertain you and also touch you. It's not going to preach on. So when it comes to me na gumagawa ako ng story, it's basic. I mean, if you compile a John Wick story and you insert some multiversal stuff na hindi rin ako ka fan pero ganyan ginagawa. And also, it's about this girl. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her. Just came in. Final Fantasy uh, character. Mm-hmm. It's One of my favorite women of all time. So I included her, or at least parts of her personality into a woman and me and me being an inactive part of a hitman hitman group and also under a former regime ng ano tawag dito a tyrannical regime that i personally ousted and they're coming to me because they want to save the girl nakala ko patay na so i've been trained by the best which i'm nanay ko kasama din siya sa stock and mm-hmm. i have um other mentors in the story na yun, which they know na hindi na nila kaya. So what's going to happen, they're going to send me back in time, in specific um, time frames and also other other pla- I'm sorry, other al- alternative realities that I need to save this particular person because at the end of the day, you need to reach a version of her. Mm-hmm. And the original version of her has the the life equation. And and then you mean development go now slowly na nang love kana sa tao but you're still not expressing anything because this is just just a job and the job is far more important than personal experience personal um feelings for who is the person and siguro na sulit ko ning ending niya and yung ending niyan kinukuwento ko sa ibang tao wow hindi na naisip yan ah it's like it's like yung final battle na lahat lahat ng mga tinulungan mo along the way they converge sumama sa iyo and then there's an opposing force na papasok na hawak nila yung yung original version ng babae and you yourself na parang alam din nila now there's no one else going to help parang ikaw na lang talaga yung kailangan tumapos ng trabaho 
it's more fictional. It's very um, unrealistic in totosin, but it's inspired by a lot of things. And also inspired by the songs that I listen to. And I'm a big progressive metal fan. So when you listen to prog rock in general, you get to see the concepts that they write when writing long form, writing long form stuff. That's a different discussion, pero I think that's how I tackle it. It's a, basically a mix of everything. And also the main reason why I'm doing it is because I have enough of these people na bibigyan sa'yo na magandang IP, intellectual property, and then hindi maganda yung bibigyan nyo sa atin. Na, para nag-yearn ako na, ano kayo mangyayagay dito pag binayan ako? And I know some people in the West na ganun na yung ginagawa nila. And I'm going to interview someone from the West na he raised up $3 million dollars on a comic book na ginawa niya recently. And ayun yun, it's like we need to push against bad writing kasi sila nila may agay lagi. That's why when you see yung mga nakakancel ngayon, bad woman is canceled. Ay, bad girl is canceled. The other things are getting canceled. Why? Because of bad writer. And unti-unti na na-wake up yung mga tao. Anyway, sorry for mm-hmm. the long ano, banter, pero ay, ayun, that's the reason why I'm writing. Yeah. And I like how you put put people from your life into your story and also a lot of other not just favorite characters but also music and like everything else because i think that everyone has a unique experience right of life everybody is unique so you have a unique um experience to share as well that makes your story stand out and that makes your story maybe um entertaining because Uh, from what you described earlier, it sounds like a fun movie. It's very wild, but interesting in a way that it will um, like draw eyes from other people. And yeah, sounds like a good idea that I will also try to do maybe sometime. Like um, try to try to put some fiction. So yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I actually that's kind of. Um, I am heading there. I just feel like I'm I'm really bad right now. Like I have a long way to go, but I do have some stuff. I have some stuff, but I would consider mm-hmm. them very bad. Like I have, I I'm not confident enough in putting them out yet. But right now, this is what I'm doing. But yeah, I like the idea of like having um intellectual property that I could just sell and have loads of money. Yeah, that sounds that, nice. That's it, right? That, that's... <clears throat> sorry. When it comes to IPs, kasi, when I say IPs a while ago, it, it's like the established IPs. It's not the for, from groundwork IP that you oh, want yeah. to do, like mm-hmm. like your name. So, we're not yung Christian uh, foremost, and also, this is my book. That's your intellectual life. That's your own. From, yeah. From start to finish. What people are doing is, we're going to take something like Resident Evil, and then, We're going to write stuff not belonging to Resident Evil. Tapos yun ilalagay na sa Netflix. Yeah, a lot of And stuff like that right now. People still watch it. People still watch it. A lot of stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Medyo uso ngayon yan eh. Kasi I, I don't know if a, a lot of stuff really like yeah, a lot because I'm not sure if people are running out of their own creative ideas. They're running they're out just, of their ideas. Yeah. That's just, basically it. They're just getting something from the past and like maybe doing adaptations with humans, <laughs> like live adaptations of movies. How hard is it? That's the reason why probably I'm looking forward to the next movie I'll be watching from the past. It's because back then, they used their own ideas, their own genesis of uh, stories. Unlike right now, if I have a billion dollars, I might probably buy Star Wars. And then this is what's happening. If you, I'm not sure if you're a fa- fan of the recent recent films. I'm not. Uh, just because I'm a big fan of the OT, the original trilogy. It's like we take the name mm-hmm. and then we create our own story. And we just plaster the name Star Wars in it. And it's going to sell whether or not it's a good medium or a media. Story or a good movie because it has a Star Wars name. And being a writer yourself, I think you know that if you don't have anything 
good to write, you might as well not write or apply for formulate a lot more good a lot more experience or sit down and reflect on why I'm not um getting to write good stuff. That's what what's uh that's what the problem Hollywood Hollywood, sorry, throat Hollywood has right now. It's a running of out of ideas. Running out of ideas and they try to put uh, modern day politics in their writing, which is not working. That's why you're seeing a lot of people, a lot of um, things getting canceled. Cowboy Bebop, Bebop, isang ano, isang season lang canceled na agad siya. This, this new Resident Evil series in Netflix is going to get canceled because of their stupidity. And recently, Bad Girl, which is a very big um, deal in the DC EU. Or the DC Cinematic Universe is now being cancelled. So Sunod na Dawin Supergirl, which is also going to be cancelled, that's going to that's not going to be seeing the light of day. And probably the flash as well. Why are the, these things happening? Because people are getting to wake up and uh, we're not we're no longer selling to people. We we just like to use the name. That's it. It's just um this movie in name only, and we're going to do what we want. Rather than doing our own stuff. Because they know if we don't have the name behind the stuff that we want to or the new stuff that we have, it's not going to sell this. And you being a writer, alam mo yun, na parang mahirap talagang maglabas ng isang bagay na bago. Because you don't know what will be the reaction of people. Regardless if you have the IP name or not. The only difference is if you have the intellectual properties name, the established ones, you'll still get to sell stuff. Right? Sabi natin to Miguel for a while. Even in Thor, Love and Thunder, the last ng ano niya, ng kita niya, comes the second week, it's a, almost a 70% drop off. So, may kita ng tao kung gaano ka pa ang yung, yung movie na yun. Even in Doctor Strange, which I'm not sure if you listened to our recent conversation, but Doctor Strange physically made me ill ng umupawi na ako. Because I wanted that movie to be good, and it wasn't. I was less disappointed with Thor kahit na sobrang pangit din niya rather than Doctor Strange too. So in the end, we just need to be pumping the content that we want to have. Like if we've had enough of uh, modern media, we need to be the media. We need to be the culture, sabi nga nila. Well, granted na it's not going to be an easy task for you, me, and everyone else. But then again, if you don't do it, you, will, you wouldn't really know. That's why I have respect for people like us, you, and other people, because even this content creation podcast, hindi siya madali. Hindi siya madali. You have to formulate everything. Well, ako, I, I operate in a different realm, um, probably because I have the experience now. But most of the time, 99% of the things that I do is unscripted. Yun na nakakatawa. Or ang paganda ni mga tao, okay, let's just sit down and enjoy talking about this. And a bunch of mm-hmm. questions just um, formulated in my head. And they enjoy it for some reason. They also like to ask questions. So, yeah. If you guys are together with the modern media, try to be creative. If not, try to look for another um, another medium. If you don't enjoy Hollywood, then go back here locally. Maybe you can find Which is probably one of your questions then, right? I think. Yeah. So you've talked a lot about Hollywood media. How about Filipino movies? Like, what is your opinions about the things that we produce here in the Philippines? Because you know, um, for me, I have my own opinion of them, but I think that you have an extensive one yourself. No, so, I, I think mas lamang kasi ako when it comes to local. Yeah, because but, hmm. yung ano ko lang before I only watch. Probably the 90s and early 2000s, um, locally, with those. And again, coming from the 90s, na sobrang political or correct. Pero hindi siya yung tipong ano. Most of the things that we've done before, it's more comedy. To be honest with you, it's more co- comedic. Yung mga series natin, yung mga movies natin, no so action. Either yon or sobrang nakatakot like shake rattle, rattle and roll and stuff like that. But even before, ramdam ko na mas mas may talent ang tao magsulat. And that's hard for me to say, kasi hindi ako nanonood ngayon. I think the last local thing that I watched was a 
I think it's on the job, which I particularly enjoyed, but I can't remember what happened there. So when it comes to local, ano kasi, local media, I'm trying to immerse myself when it comes to Filipino stuff because kailangan, di ba? Parang kailangan mana tayo, eh. like all this, uh, proud tayo, whatever comes out from our, our country when it comes to the market natin. But I really don't know why. It could probably be hindi na tayo nag-adapt sa meron ang mga ibang countries. You could say that we are in a third world country na mahirap talaga yung yung magkaroon ka ng backing from multi-million dollar groups of even passer groups na they, they will be able to produce your ideas. It's hard. That's why you also see a lot of independent uh, filmmakers. And sometimes, na yuginig ko na maganda yung kantukan niyan. But I can't, for some reason, I can't be bothered to watch them. Probably because yung mga napapanood ko in the news na why am I seeing a lot of this na hindi ko gusto? It, it, it's like the theme na meron na kailangan may kabit, kailangan may ganto. There's the love story na ganun. Paulit-ulit na lang. Masabihin na natin yung longest running na yung probinsya. Na parang, is this the best that we have? I know that's not the best that we have. And we should act more and also helping these people out. But the problem is... Paano natin susuportahan yung isang bagay na hindi tayo pinapakinggan? And I know a lot of people na they try to air out their ano, their opinions regarding specific movie, especially in the MMFF. Ano nangyayari? I see some bashing pa from the people from that side of the aisle rather than makinig kayo sa fans ninyo. So, there's a part of me that would like to give our local uh, produ- uh, local media chance, pero I can't be bothered right now kasi wala ako nagugusto. Yeah. Yeah. I agree naman actually with you because uh, there are Filipino movies that I like but majority I do mm. not like. And it's mostly because I think that the approach that they have right now it's very commercial eh. Like, they bring I, Let me in... ask you the question. Yeah. Let me ask you that question. Ano yung recent na na-enjoy mo na local show or lo- local film? Tagal na. Wait lang. I don't, I don't <laughs> remember <laughs> na yun. Diba? Kasi talaga. Um, I don't remember anymore. Kasi nga, nag pandemic. So, ang tagal hindi, mm-hmm. ang tagal na hindi nag-cinema, right? Um, yeah. And then, I don't watch like um, local movies on Netflix, kahit na may mga Filipino produced um, Netflix shows na, man na. But, yeah. Kasi, di ba you give Provenciano as an example, Panina, and all of the other things kasi it's more of, I'm not sure, but I think na sobrang lax Yung, yung writing is very is kulang budget is also kulang tapos or they're trying maybe to sell... na ano na tayo parang sorry interrupt maybe nasanay na yung society natin na kailangan kanto lagi nila ilabas same with our music totoo sen when it comes uh-huh. to music then parang na stuck na tayo sa 90s na kailangan ka parehas ng eraser heads usually yung nagiging given the word airways yeah so because... sorry I think they're really tackling it in a business pers- market perspective. I think there's a business side there naman lahat, lahat, diba? Na parang what sells, if they see that something is selling, they keep on producing that type of content, that type of movie. And everything is, they're just milking where the money is. Like, even if the story is bad. Like, for example, they would produce a movie featuring this star and they know that people would watch it even if the writing is bad. So it's all about the money. And I guess that's why um, we have we formed like a bad opinion of Philippine mm-hmm. um, movies is because we don't get to see those na brilliantly created by maybe indie films or like those na mas may ano parang authentic I'm not sure ah. 
Um, but yeah. I, that's just my own opinion about it. I think that the whole movie industry, the entertainment industry, is kind of just in it for the money and not really about showcasing the creativity or like the stories of the Filipino. Parang ganon. I think when it comes to entertainment, because even in the West, everything is suffering in, in some sort of um, bad parts, especially in writing. When you said that we have bad writing because we're start, so, um, still stuck with the same formula when it comes to business, I think that that's also happening predominantly in the Western Hemisphere, also in Hollywood. The only difference is they're using it as a vessel to push the message Meanwhile, this happened. We're using it just because people know the name. They know the name. Sabi natin, they know anything kabisote. So next year, gawa na naman tayo sa pamovie anything kabisote, regardless kung may sense na lagang gawin pa or hindi. There's actually one, na nala ko na. There is one um, Filipino, not really Filipino based, pero the story is Filipino, yung anime na trese. Yeah. People are raving about that. And I haven't really watched it, but I'm a big fan of supernatural stuff. So I might take a peek there because I nagustuhan ng tao in 2020. But again, I'm I can't be bothered with local stuff talaga. Just because I want it to be good. There, there's an anticipation for me na kailangan kento siya. Parang ang hirap ibaba ng standard na once you get to realize that. Kento dapat. Kento dapat yung writing. Kento dapat yung characters. I try to turn that off most of the time. Because what I discover is when I do turn that off, sometimes it's the enjoy I watch. But logically, it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And I do hope that lo- the local uh, natin, entertainment natin, they get to see that there are some weaknesses in their, not only in the writing, but also what they want to um, involve in. We don't really need big namers na kung tutosin. You just need competent people who know what they're doing, who knows what they're doing. And also, yeah, you could throw in one name there, but everything else kailangan maayos in line. It's not a party na tipong, we need this person here. Kasi kikita tayo, we need this person here. Kasi makakapag, ano siya, makakapag-PR siya. We need that person there para market to. No. If the story is good, if it's going to be marketed the right way, kahit na hindi pa gano'n kaganda yung in production niya, sometimes ma, mas maganda pa. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, gano'n na may gano'n genesis natin. Na tipong kaya na natin makapag-compete. Well, sinasabi nila kaya naman makapag-compete in, in the international ano, realm, but why isn't it consistent? You see consistency in Japan. You can see consistency in China. Sorry, kahit na hindi ako fan ng Chinese. You can see consistency even in Malaysia. Dito sa atin parang, eh, na, kasi wala siguro yung support pa. Mm-hmm. And that's that. Yeah. So, we're coming into the end of the podcast already, JM. So, we talked ah, a lot. We it. talked a lot about <laughs> um movies and I actually learned a lot from you and would, and I think after this discussion, I would have like a lot of questions, especially when I'm watching um movies when I'm like hearing about news about the movies and stuff and mm-hmm. all of that. And I guess what I got from here is that ayun, it's just really trying to form my own opinions about the media that I'm taking in. So mm-hmm. to end the podcast, we have this session, I mean session, we have this segment called Safe Words, which is kind of, in summary, how would you um, let the listeners know or like what can they learn from this talk in a few words like what would be our safe words for this episode with you it's hard to uh, know that marami kung totoo said yeah. again I'm also deep into steep into personal development but what I could say is people should raise their level of awareness it, the, it it's not limited with media it can be used everywhere when i say level of awareness you need to know what's going on especially within yourself first if i'm watching something if you're watching something is it really something that you really want to watch or is it something that you know that you enjoy along the way 
when you translate it in real in a real world scenario real level of awareness is you get to see kung saan ka nakaposisyon sa buhay mo is this the place that you want to be in at this point and that drives you to become a better individual that drives you to choose the better medium of entertainment that you have so it's going to be hard kahit ako natutunan ko pa rin because i learned that from a mentor of mine and also i had him in the podcast before which is a very big mistake that ginawa ko siyang guest he was a tedx speaker ginawa ko siyang guest in my second episode which is a very bad move but um what i learned there is throughout the years even regardless if you're watching movies regardless if anything else just compare your life right now and look at where you are five years ago tama ba yung path mo it are you congruent on what you want to happen in your life if not you have to go ahead and step back regardless if you're doing this podcast regardless if you're doing work kailangan mo magpahinga you need to reassess if this is the right uh, you're in the right place right now if not then retool reassess if you're going to the right place na gusto mo in plan or maybe medyo lumiliko ka pero it's still the same goal then just go do it just make sure that you do everything with integrity you do everything um with authentic authenticity of your with yourself when it, just be authentic and don't be a bad person towards other people as much as you can just be uh, honest but also be compassionate be yeah. loving there's a big difference in being nice and also being compassionate just be yourself and try to make yourself the best ver- version of you can of you that you can man thank you very much jm for all of those we got a lot of wisdom and insights from that uh, and of course we'd like to follow you even after this podcast is there are there any um social media and like your platform your youtube channel that we could follow or subscribe to where we can catch you okay so Again, thank you so much, for Christian, for having me around. And um, I know Major Chatty when it comes to this st- sort of um, medium because this is what I do. But you could, if you guys are fans of long form discussions, you could go ahead and visit Zero Hour Discussions at Facebook, Zero Hour Discussions with JM Chris on YouTube. Uh, I'll try to create some more simpler and shorter videos but for now it's more of a reaction and also discussion panel tonight at this very night later we will have a another panel celebrating the 10 years of the dark night so uh, the dark night rises so i'll have some people talking about that and most importantly do tune in to this podcast and christian foremost that's the most important thing so you get to hear a lot more not just me but also other people's experiences and also what they have to offer Thank you so much for having me also. Thank you. We had so much fun um, talking with you, JM. I certainly learned a lot. And I hope that we get to um, catch up soon on your platform. Yeah, naman. yeah so sure. Uh, I do have something in store well. for you. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll prepare myself. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you, guys. See you on the next episode. And thank you, JM.